icebreaker drills, jumping into the water on a frozen lake. For these personnel, it's the final part of the cold weather aviation operators course run by Operation Clockwork in Bardafoss, Norway. It's eight days of survival and tactical training in the Arctic. So let's rewind a little and show you more of what's involved. To operate out here, you have to pass our cold weather aircraft operators course, uh, cold weather survival course. So before anybody can actually operate in Norway or come to Norway as part of the deployment, they have to pass our training first. One of the hardest things to do is just to survive and live in the Arctic. Uh, part of CHF's remit is to operate from austere remote locations, and that involves putting people and equipment out into the field. In the wooded training area, it's a relatively gentle start for this group as they camp out in tents and get to grips with learning how to keep warm in a region where temperatures can drop to minus 30 degrees Celsius. This arm motion is taught as a way to warm up quickly. Being aware of how your body is coping in the unforgiving climate is crucial. So in a bag, when we're, when we're about to go out with one of our drills, we've got to have our warmers, which is basically this inner layer here and it's just a nice comfort layer, it's nice and warm. And then here we have our Gore-Tex jacket, which is windproof and waterproof. So foot checks from the dock is, um, is quite important because cold weather injuries can come out of nowhere and then it can put you back, on, back into, onto base very fast. Uh, so when it comes around, every few hours, he checks your feet, checks that you haven't got any uh, frost nip or frost bite, uh, and then he just moves on, basically. You want to look for like, no colouring in your fingers uh, or waxy looks. Just standing still in the extreme cold makes your lungs function as if you were jogging on the spot. So moving with snowshoes on not only burns up the calories, it's also tricky to manoeuvre across the unknown terrain. As this course continues, it gets more difficult. There are no tents this evening. It's up to the team to build their own shelter. So the lean two that we're doing just behind me there, um, it's good to have a couple of trees that are close together. Um, and then we can uh, we set up a, like a, what's called a goal post, so two posts, timber across the top as a crossbar, and then we can just find any bit of timber then to lean up against it, uh, and then we take down a bit of brushwood, which is obviously just the foliage and the trees, and lean that over and uh, just to keep the warmth. In. The more effort they put in now, the more comfortable they will be later on. The other type of shelter being built here is a Quincy. It requires a little more precision. You start off with a mound of snow that's at least two metres in height and around four to five metres wide. And as demonstrated here, the snow needs to be packed down so the structure strengthens. Then pieces of brushwood are pushed in to a depth of around 50 centimetres. And then you have to wait. It needs to be left for a minimum of one hour, and in this time the snow crystals bond and the mound hardens. Now an entrance tunnel can be built, and remember those pieces of brushwood? Well, once you're inside, you dig up and out until you reach those branches, which means the walls stay nice and thick. And the hard work doesn't stop there. The sleeping bay must be built higher than the roof of the entrance tunnel for warmth. A hole is made with a ski pole for ventilation, which is paramount. It ensures there's enough oxygen getting in, and a burning candle shows the levels are safe, and there's always someone on candle watch to make sure this continues. That's your bed sorted for the night, but what about food? So we killed some chickens this afternoon and stripped them back. Um, Arctic chickens, not quite as fully filled as chickens back home, but hopefully we can get some meat and potatoes in there and some veg and that, it should be all right. The instructors for this course are Royal Marine Mountain leaders, but anyone from across the three services may need to complete it, as personnel must be ready for any eventuality. If our helicopters are out doing tasking and, they, and we are in this kind of environment and it does go down, then we might have to uh, push out and be with that aircraft. Uh, basically to keep that aircraft get, get aircraft get up and running again. But yeah, it's just so we can survive in this environment, really. And that's why you have to take a plunge in the ice water. It's a very real possibility that when you're out in the field, you may unknowingly go over thin ice. This drill gives you the confidence you've got what it takes to get yourself back out, no matter how hard it might be. And that sentiment is echoed for all winter Arctic deployments. Bryony Williams, Forces News, Bardafoss, Norway. 
Thanks for watching. For more from Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.